welcome back class. We're gonna start on a new venture today. Uh, so today was, uh, was <laughs> it was very profound for me because I gotta do something that I saw and I was like, you know what? We can make that. Cut in a picture from Pinterest. All right, so what I, was, what I saw on Pinterest there, because I love Pinterest, as I've said, it's it's kind of my thing. It's one of those things that you just, just fall in love with it as an art person, as an art teacher. Uh, it's just one of those things that's just super cool, super nice. And and as I was going through uh, Pinterest, the one thing I saw was your own personal calligraphy pens, calligraphy set. So I, uh, I had a can. And I took, uh, I cut the can apart to where I'd have, cut the can apart so where you have a sheet of metal and you have the top and bottoms of the can. And what I'm having my students do is we're doing our own calligraphy set, our own calligraphy piece inside of our handmade sketchbook. So it's all, um, it's a handmade kind of folky art thing that we're doing, but it's, that's what the class is for. So, you know, let's just go with it. All right, so what we did was we took the can, cut it open, to where we have the two pieces. And what I took with mine is I ran this through my uh, my slab roller, turned all the way to like zero, so that I, I could cut those pieces, so I could, uh, so as I rolled it through, it would take the curved metal and turn as flat as possible, bent out the edges so it's nice and, nice and crisp, so that you have that nice sheet of metal. Uh, and it embossed it a little bit with the print, with the marks that are on top of the roller. So I have a little bit of a, like a diamond print that you should see on a truck bed or something. Uh, but then we're holding on to the ends of the, the can because we can use this as an ink well. So what I'm having my students do is they can set the can, the end of their can in front of them. So as they're working with their brush, they can, uh, they don't have to have their own individual ink wells. And then once the product's done, you can pitch these bad boys because, um, well, these are sharp, uh, so if you have any younger classes, the classmates and whatnot, put some masking tape on the edge of this because that's, that's a, that'll give it that buffer so it won't cut you. Ah! Uh, so what I would do is uh, put some put some yeah masking tape on here, just just fine. Now with those brushes, uh, what I did was we took the metal, turned it into strips like so. And I took this one and just folded it in half and cut out my die for this brush. And all it is is just a, it's like a little leaf design, but this is the one that actually writes the best. Uh, so we did, I got five of them or six of them that I made. Nope, just five, because I have an extra one. That was it, so I had an extra one there. Um, so I had six chopsticks initially, and I made five tips for pieces. And this one, as I said, the leaf design one definitely writes the best. So if you're gonna do this project, do the leaf design first. Uh, it's the one that gives you the most, it's the one that actually gives you the most legible handwriting on there. Um, definitely that one. After that one, I would definitely say it would be this one. And this one was two pieces of metal that were just flattened. Uh, no cuts added to them, just one on top of another. I think I got some pictures, which I'll try and splice in. But then I had some other ones that were more funky. These ones were, the difference between these ones are, this one especially, because you can see how the tip on this one is been notched and there's that, it's more of a larger, wider piece to where you can do these like intricate lines and details. This one did work. Um, you just need a bigger ink well. You just, it, this one takes a lot of ink to make some cool lines, and that one gave us the lines that look like this. So you have some nice um, wide marks, some nice design pieces, but then it loses ink so fast. I definitely know that it is in it is in the way that it has been tipped. So on the edge of this one, you can see how the pieces have been crimped, and there's that bit of a change in the way that the pieces are separated out from it. That one just didn't work out too well, uh, but these two are the worst in um successfulness so they just they didn't work at all i'll try and zoom in on this so you guys can see so these pieces here they as they were tipped and crimped you can kind of see on this one this one right here where you have edges the edges of this one have just not come out the way that we wanted so like the edge on this one you can see how it's uh splayed open more at the end there and that tip is just not crisp and, and nice. While this one is firmly together, but the end of it where it's been notched right there, the, there's just not a lot of ink that goes up in there. This one is the best one where there's no visible opening at the end of it, but what it is, it's two pieces of metal. I get to focus on that. Two pieces of metal, but the it's 
been divided just slightly. I use electrical tape to adhere it to the chopstick itself. Makes a really cushy handle. I do like that. It was really uh, cushy to work on uh, as you're using it. That was a handy feature. Now this one, which was the best writing one, you can see how it's that little leaf design pattern. Um, and it just folds around the end of the chopstick really well, really good with the, uh, but the other one, this one, which was the, uh, you can see how it's opened up at the ends there. And because it's opened at the ends, it doesn't focus. It doesn't uh, hold the ink well enough. So as you attach it to the stick, uh, just it doesn't hold ink well enough. If you can make this smaller, this one's about an inch wide. If you can go for about half an inch, I think you'd have a lot better results. So those were so some of the examples that we used in class that we're working with and just came out really nice. I thought it was a really cool feature. So also my students had gotten their sketchbook, their sketchbooks, their handmade sketchbooks finished and told them and said, let's go ahead and start throwing some of these designs in there. And then, and it looks good. It's a really cool, uh, design application so that they can practice online how line moves on a paper so just doing some random lines on a paper so yeah get, just get some test in there and how this thing looks so I had I started off at the uh, in Congress uh, so we could do like a declaration of independence kind of thing uh, it looks the way that the actual paper looks and that's why I wanted them to see I want to see look this has already been done centuries before what we're doing right now, but you're having, you're able to now make something using today's materials, but it produces something old school and something that has been done before. And it gives you that prestige, that acclamation. It just, it looks cool. And uh, we have national constitution day coming up and we're doing a project that incorporates that. So it's a really good process and, and a good task for all everybody. All right. So the other big thing that I want to talk about today is that I finished up my interview questions for my interview presentations that we're doing in class now, now, because we got, I have this camera and I can do so much stuff with it. Uh, I definitely want to bring that into the classroom and use it as a device and a tool for my students to incorporate their learning application and process into a job marketability for them. So we're starting the interviews in the next day or two and hopefully I'll throw some of those up on, I don't know if they'll be on the main channel or they'll be on the vlog channel. I'm not sure yet, but I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with what. But what I'm doing is I'm having the sit down with the students where me and the, me and the student are gonna sit down and discuss the work that they've made. So welcome to the art uh, the art table with Miss. So the, uh, what's on the, t uh, oh, it's uh, it's what's on the table. Uh, no, there's art on the table, art on the table, table. Art table and Mr. G are all gonna be in that in that thing, but I'm not sure what, f what thing yet it is going to be and I got to work on doing an intro for that but I did ha want to show you my interview question so I had an interview questions and then I have 42 uh, random questions so I had this thing I love James Lipton and I love uh, most interview talk show hosts that have these weird questions in involved into their uh, James Lipton the five things that you want you want to hear God say to you or uh, what's your favorite curse word, which I can't ask a student, but I do think that the concept of having something freeing like that instead of a, let's talk about the work, the work is the only thing that matters, the work. Sometimes we do want to know about the student as well. Sometimes we want to know about that person. I want that int that uh, availability of that interaction to be prevalent in the interview too. I think that that's, that makes the interview. So I went on a couple different websites and I'll try and as I'm doing this in, in the video, I've got several, so like uh, one on here. Uh, you have a new addition to the crayon box. What color would you be and why? And that's from Glassdoor. Uh, so that they get a shout out too, so that, you know, I'm not trying to copyright anything. I'm not trying to steal anything. But I took these from those sites because I thought they were great questions. Those are they're just good stuff. So the students are going to have four questions that are based upon their own work. The fifth question is going to be a random one that they're just going to draw out of a container. I think I got a head container I'm working on right now too, so that you're pulling the, it out of their mouth. But the four interview questions are as follows. So the interview questions are going to be number one, how will this make you money? Number two, how would you grade yourself on the project? Number three, what did you learn? And finally, number four, what would you change? Now they can answer those things. Then they answered the questions that I have to ask as a teacher, uh, but then they have some cool stuff for themselves as well. It's just a, it's just a beautiful thing all around. I have fun with it. They have fun with it. Before I wrap up for class today, just a quick reiteration, made some cool mark making tools. Did some stuff in our sketchbooks, made some marks and some lines, and we have our interview questions done. Don't forget that we're, don't forget to do your homework, and I will see you guys next class. 
Hey class, I hope that you liked that last video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe down there at the bottom. Now I'm going to get back to uh, doing my thing, which is uh, work on my own stuff. So uh, don't forget to follow me on the web. I got a bunch of places you can find me, such as Pinterest. Or t no, not, not, we're not doing Tumblr. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, GroupMe. That's a new one for me. And Steam. Uh, and my personal favorite, YouTube. Check me out. Like and subscribe. See you guys later. Next class. Follow. See you later. Next class. Do your homework. <laughs>